Hello guys, welcome to the forensic ballistic classes and in this class, in this session, we are going to learn about introduction to forensic ballistics, what is ballistics and what are the functions of forensic ballistics in forensic science and what a forensic ballistic expert has to do. So let's go ahead, let's move ahead with this introduction and this I will complete in few sessions, one or two video. This is about only the introduction. In detail, we'll be taking separate topics. Okay, so please be with me. Thank you. As you can see, the term ballistic refers to the science of action, motion and behavior of a projectile. So what you need here, you need a projectile. This projectile can be anything. You know, in older days, we need to use uh, uh, the arrows, the bow and arrows. So the, uh, the bow was working as a firearm and the arrow was working as a projectile. Even if you throw a stone in the air, that a stone is going to be a projectile. So anything that can be hurled with a certain force in any medium that will be called as projectile. I'm repeating it again. Anything that can be hurled with the certain force in any medium is going to be called as a projectile. So what the ballistic means, how the projectile is going to behave and act as per its motion during its flight in that medium. You got it? Let's say you are throwing a stone in the air. Now what will be the ballistics of the stone? What will be the motion? What will be the action of this stone in the air or in any given medium, whether it is water, whether it is air, whether it is in vacuum. So what will be its ballistics? Uh, its motion and action, it will be called as the ballistics of that projectile. The flight of the path includes these three things. Okay, let us talk about in terms of the firearm. Okay, so even if you will say rocket launcher, rocket launcher is also a firearm that we will talk in the next slide. And uh, the missile, the missile is a projectile because missile will have a certain path uh, in the medium, in the atmosphere. So it is going to be acting as a projectile. So ballistic is divided into three main categories, internal ballistics which is when the projectile is traveling down the barrel. Now this barrel can be large, this barrel can be small, okay, of any size, of any diameter. So this is going to be internal ballistic. Then the path through the air, okay, when we talk about the firearm, because you are going to shoot the firearm on the planet Earth. So we are talking about the air. So when the projectile leaves the muzzle of the gun, then till the target, it known as the external ballistics, and then within the target, when the bullet or the projectile moves within the target, it is known as terminal ballistics. So let's see ahead. Now see this diagram carefully. Suppose if this is the barrel of the gun and this is the cartridge, cartridge which is having a projectile. Projectile means the bullet here. And as soon as we initiate the firing, I will explain you what is firing mechanism, how it is being done. So when we initiate the firing, the bullet leaves the muzzle. So the traveling of the bullet within the barrel is known as internal or interior ballistics. The traveling of the bullet outside the muzzle, this end of the barrel is known as muzzle end and the back end of the barrel is known as the breech end. Okay, you got it. This is the breech end. This is the muzzle end. So when the projectile leaves the muzzle till the target, it is known as external ballistics. So whether it is in the air, whether it is in the water, or in any medium, it will be known as external ballistics. And whenever it hits the target and when it travels down within the target, it is known as the terminal ballistics. Okay, you got it? And terminal ballistic is also known as wound ballistic if the target is a living organism. Okay, if the target is living, the terminal ballistic will be considered as wound ballistic. And if the target is non-living, it will be considered as the terminal ballistics. So next is what is forensic ballistic then? Now we understood the ballistic, the term ballistic. It is the action, motion and behavior of the projectile in any given medium. Okay. Now what is forensic ballistic? It deals with the, it is that branch of forensic science which deals with the examination of firearm evidences. Now what a firearm evidence? It can be a firearm, it can be a cartridge, it can be a cartridge case, it can be a bullet, it can be firearm injury. All these are the evidences which are encountered in a shooting case and those evidences provides link, its linkage to the firearm as well as to identify the shooter. 
when we do all these things it is known as forensic ballistic i told you the, in the definition of forensic science when we apply science in terms of law for the purpose of justice so what we are doing here we are applying the ballistic science in terms of law for the purpose of justice to identify the shooter to relate the uh, the crime with the criminal and the crime scene and to link all the evidences to identify all the evidences so this is we are going to do in forensic ballistic and evidences i told you it can be a firearm which may or may not be there on the crime scene it may be a cartridge unused cartridge it may be a uh, empty cartridge case a fired cartridge case it can be a projectile outside the body inside the body inside any target so this all will be the evidences in such cases now next is it also helps in the reconstruction of a shooting case so forensic ballistic is all about the reconstruction of a shooting case let's move ahead now what are the questions that the forensic ballistic expert has to answer in this case in any shooting case okay so first question will be answered is type of firearm used when we say type of firearm used means whether it is a handgun whether it is a shoulder gun or whether it is a revolver whether it is a pistol whether it is a rifle which type of rifle which type of revolver what type of pistol all these will be the type of the firearms okay i hope you got it the next is identification of the firearm means whether this particular firearm this alleged firearm which has been produced as an evidence in the court room or with the investigator is the same firearm that has been used in this case so we are going to link the firearm with the crime okay so identification of the firearm then individual characteristics of the firearm what are the characteristic features of the firearm which we are going to correlate or which we are going to link with the other evidences maybe with the firearm injury then we are going to identify the range of firing or distance of firing what was the distance of firing at the time of shooting what was the direction of firing and identification of the shooter who was the shooter and and next is the medical legal aspect of the case means whether it is a suicidal case whether the person has committed suicide self infliction whether it is homicide means somebody else have killed that person or it is merely an accident so these all are the works of the forensic ballistic expert with other forensic scientists that has to be answered in any shooting case do you think all of these can be answered i don't think so because you know we can tell what type of firearm have been used if the firearm is not there we can still say what type of firearm has been used we can tell range of firing but always we cannot identify the shooter identification of the shooter depends upon the gunshot residue on the shooter's hand the fingerprints on the firearm and so many other factors so all of these are not uh, possible to answer in any particular case but many of these can be answered and believe me the case can be solved easily a few of these questions can be answered in that case now next is what is firearm okay you all know you will say firearm is a gun okay but firearm can be anything it has not to have any particular model the basic requirement is it should be any instrument which is designed or adapted to discharge a projectile i told you when we hurled when we throw a projectile with a certain force okay through any mechanism that mechanism becomes the firearm now what is required here to consider a instrument as a firearm is this force should be generated with by the expanding gases as the main charge let's say you have used some explosive now the force of explosive when the explosive is burning out and when the the gases are being expanded so this force will be exerted onto the projectile and projectile will be hurled out of that instrument so it will be called as firearm now it has not to have any particular shape you can still use a sanitary pipe and you can insert a cartridge case in a sanitary pipe and then you can complete the fire mechanism still so that instrument that sanitary pipe will be considered as a part of the firearm or as a firearm itself but 
mainly the modern firearms are divided into two main categories smooth bore and rifled bore which we will learn in the next slide but you can see here i have mentioned three firearm which is one is the pistol other one is a revolver then a rifle a rifle is usually a long barrel gun then a pistol is quite semi automatic maybe automatic and revolver is again semi automatic i will explain all these things in furthermore sessions in detail okay now coming to the parts of the firearm if you will see here i would like to mention only three parts all others are the sub parts of these three parts so the first part is barrel barrel is made up of iron or hardened steel okay through which the projectile comes out or which is actually aimed on to the target now this can be single barrel this can be double barrel any diameter okay grooved barrel smooth bore barrel which we will talk uh, later on then comes the major part which is the action mechanism so whatever is say the trigger trigger guard uh, firing pin hammer everything comes in action mechanism so first part is barrel second is action third is butt or a stock okay by which you hold the gun so even if you look at the previous slide i'll show you the previous slide so this is the barrel this is the action mechanism here and this is the butt or the stock this is the barrel this is the action mechanism here this is the butt and the stock okay i hope you got uh, it clear so there are three major part of the firearm now let's move ahead classification of modern firearm there are various classifications but right now i am not going to discuss all of those i am going to discuss only two basic classifications on which all the modern firearms have been classified one is the smooth bore firearm it means as you can see uh, the grooving inside here okay i have not shown you the diagram of the smooth bore here maybe in the next slide but the inside of this barrel internal diameter is smooth as in case of shotguns as in case of country made firearms okay so the internal diameter is smooth so these are known as smooth bore firearms and in rifled bore the grooving is being done as you can see the grooving here so these are the smooth bore firearm the examples of sorry these are known as the rifled bore firearm the examples of rifled bore firearms are rifles revolver pistols machine guns they all have the grooving inside their barrel okay let's go to the another slide and when we talk about rifling or grooving so it is the creation of the grooves you can see the grooves here and the elevated portion is known as the lands and the depressed portion is known as the grooves so we are creating the grooves there are various mechanisms to create the grooves button rifling broch rifling which again we will discuss in further sessions in detail and so lands and grooves are there okay so but in case of a smooth bore like shotgun there is no grooving inside the barrel and in rifle bore there is grooving inside the barrel why this grooving is done so this grooving is actually done it provide the stability we will talk in next slide it provides the gyratory motion means the spinning motion to the projectile and effective range efficacy okay so as you can see the smooth bore there is no grooving inside the barrel and if you will take the diameter of the smooth bore it is commonly called as bore in firearm cases and when you have lands and grooves distance between two opposite grooves or two opposite lands is known as the caliber both are same thing but the term caliber is used in rifled case rifled bore cases and the term bore is used in smooth bore cases you got it there are various types of rifling polygonal rifling i told you that we will discuss this separately so but the number of grooving the direction of grooving all depends from firearm to firearm from one from one manufacturer to other manufacturer okay then coming to the ammunition or the cartridges so as we know there are two types of firearm smooth bore and rifled bore hence there are two types of cartridges that are used one for a smooth bore firearm which use certain shots and pellets and other one is rifled bore weapon cartridge which uses a single projectile or a bullet okay 
Now this is made up of uh, in shotgun cartridge it is made up it can be made up of a plastic it can be made up of a hardened cardboard or compressed papers and the base is made up of the brass whereas in case of rifled weapon cartridge it le it is completely made up of brass and other alloys and the bullet is also made up of uh, lead brass nickel and other things okay now what is the composition of the cartridge so there are these four things in the cartridge first one is the primer which is also known as primary charge or the initiator or the detonator please remember this it is also known as primary charge initiator or detonator then other thing is the main charge which is also known as the gunpowder or the propellant which is the main charge for burning and the major component which is projectile which will go out and injure the person or hit the target and then the casing of the cartridge where all these things will be assembled okay so first thing is the primer now primer is usually a high explosive which is shock sensitive which ignites immediately you have seen in the fireworks or the crackers you use a wick they are outside the crackers that wick is having a high explosive or the primer which is used as a detonator which will initiate the firing which will initiate the flash inside the cartridge to burn the main charge so the examples are mercury fulminate lead azide lead stiffenate mercury azide all these are the examples of the primary charge primary charge is used in very small amount okay to initiate the firing and then there is the main charge or the gunpowder which used in large amount and it is usually a low explosive and then we use the projectile and the casing as well now next is the main charge as you can see on the slide the main charge can be black powder which is commonly known as gunpowder then semi smokeless powder and smokeless powder now black powder is made up of potassium nitrate which is 75% which is used as an oxidizer or oxidizing agent then we have the sulfur and the charcoal which creates the smoke okay in the composition of 75 is to 10 is to 15 then we have the semi smokeless powder which is quite expensive and quite effective than the black powder so in semi smokeless powder we have the combination of black powder and a nitrogenous base powder now this nitrogenous base powder can be nitrocellulose or nitroglycerin okay so we are using this can be 30% 70% 50% 50% 70% 30% the cost and effectiveness of the powder of the propellant will vary accordingly how much black powder is used how much nitrogenous base is used okay then we have the completely highly effective powder which is smokeless powder and it is it can be single based means only consisting of either nitrocellulose or nitroglycerin or it can be a double base means the combination of nitrocellulose or nitroglycerin again in different composition 20% 80% 80% 20% 50 50 all of these i think the concept is clear and the third thing which uh, cartridge is having if you can see this diagram now this is the diagram for a shotgun cartridge okay i'll explain it in detail in the next session because i cannot explain everything right now but you see there is a casing which is uh, probably made up of either plastic or the compressed papers then there is a brass base okay then we have the main charge the main charge can be anything but most commonly in shotgun cartridge we use the black powder the gunpowder because it is quite cheaper and less effective in comparison to the rifled bore cartridge then as a projectile we use small shots and the pellets and there are wads also which have the cushioning power expensing power which expand when the the gases are uh, the pressure is being created okay that also we will discuss later on and in case of rifled cartridge we simply has the primary charge and the casing of the brass i'm telling you again this in previous slide also we have discussed this and then the main charge the main charge or the propellant here can be simple gunpowder means the black powder it can be 
nitrogenous base means semi smokeless or smokeless all this okay rest will complete in part 2 so till then thank you very much